Is it a coincidence that Joshua, who is a picture of Christ, who has the same name as Christ, saved the people of Gibeon, which is an ancient city in Palestine? Is it also a coincidence that Joshua saved Rahab? In her name, you can spell Arab in Jericho. Now, Jericho is the West Bank of Palestine. Is that a coincidence? Is it also a coincidence that Joseph was the Messiah of another nation? He saved Egypt. Is that a coincidence? Is it also a coincidence that Isaiah, which is the same name as the prophet Isa, the only difference between Isaiah and Isa is Isaiah means salvation of the Lord and Isa simply means salvation. Is it a coincidence that Isaiah said boldly that I was sought of them that sought me not? He is speaking to the Gentiles. Out of all the books in the Old Testament, the book of Isaiah speaks of reaching out to the Gentiles more than any other book in the Old Testament. Is that a coincidence? I'll tell you, all these coincidences don't add up. They only add up to logic. It only makes sense that according to the Quran, Jesus is the Messiah in Islam. In Islam only. Now we're going to look at some stories. And I want to go, let's go to the story of Joshua in 9 verse 3. And when the inhabitants of Gibeah heard what Joshua had done unto Jericho and to Ai, they did work willingly and went and made as if they had been ambassadors and took old sacks upon their asses and wine bottles old and rent and bound up and old shoes and clouded upon their feet and old garments upon them. And all the bread of their provision was dry and moldy. And they went to Joshua unto the camp at Gilgal and said unto him and to the men of Israel, We be come from a far country. Now therefore make ye a league with us. Verse 15. And Joshua made peace with them and made a league with them to let them live. And the princes of the congregation swore unto them. So here we have Joshua saving the people of Palestine because Palestine is Gibeon. And not only did he save them, but he promised unto the Lord that they would live and remain among the children of Israel as this day. But what happened? Let's go to Second Samuel chapter 21 and let's go to verse 1 then there was a famine in the days of David three years year after year and David inquired of the Lord and the Lord answered it is for Saul and for his bloody house because he slew the Gibeonites now let's pause right there Israelite camps right now make no sense how can you say that God is only concerned about the 12 tribes when God right now is about to kill some Israelites for messing with some people of Gibeon, okay? Saul killed the Gibeonites. So in order to settle God's wrath, now the Israelites have to be killed in the place of the Gibeonites. This is God's way. And it was all because Joshua made peace with the people of Palestine. It's okay to say that because Gibeon is in Palestine. And now Saul, who is a picture of Paul, is destroying the Gibeonites, the Palestinians. Just think about it today. Right now, America has been playing the devil's advocate and they have been assisting Israel in the killing of the Palestinians. And now God is saying, if you want this famine to go away, then that means seven of Saul's sons have to be hung. Now, the sons of Saul is going into the Christians. The Christians are sons of Saul. 
Now, Paul is the father of the Christian church. He said that with his own mouth. He said that in his own words. So the sons of Saul are the Christians. In order for God's wrath to be appeased, then the Christians must die. In the place of the Gibeonites. Now, the Gibeonites were murdered. All because of King Saul. And the Christians and the Jews will be a ransom for the Muslims. As it is written in the Al-Bakari, God will give every Muslim a Jew and a Christian and will say, this is your ransom from the fire. We'll get to that later. Let's go to verse 3. Wherefore David said unto the Gibeonites, what shall I do for you? And wherewith shall I make the atonement? that ye may bless the inheritance of the Lord. Let's pause on that word atonement. This is the only time atonement is referenced as people, not animals, okay? The children of Saul will be a ransom. They will be the atonement because what they plan to do to the prophet Esau backfire. Instead of Jesus dying for them, they will die for Jesus. They will die for the Muslims. Let's keep going. Verse 4. And the Gibeonites said unto him, We will have no silver nor gold of Saul, nor of his house. Neither for us shalt thou kill any man in Israel. And he said, What ye shall say that will I do for you? And they answered the king, The man that consumed us and that devised against us that we should be destroyed from remaining in any of the coast of Israel, let seven men of his sons be delivered unto us. And we will hang them up unto the Lord in Gibeah of Saul, whom the Lord did choose. And the king said, I will give them. Now, the sons of Saul are the Christians because Paul, according to 1 Corinthians 4.15, is the father of the Christian church. You have to let your mind meditate on the fact that David was a son of Saul. Now fast forward to the New Testament. The son of David was a son of the New Testament Saul, whose name is Paul. Paul is the father. He is the Pharaoh. He is the Pharisee. He is the Akon, the kind artist who committed this great trespass against the Lord. So let's do a recap real quick. We had Joshua make peace with the people of Palestine. And then Saul comes along after him and kills them. So now the sons of Saul, metaphorically the sons of Paul must die in their stead. Now let's go to verse 7. But the king spared Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, because the Lord's oath that was between them, between David, Jonathan, the son of Saul. You see, the truth that was hidden from the foundations of the world is that Jesus, peace be upon him, was a son of Saul. He was the son of Saul, just like David was the son of Saul. But Jesus was spared. God had mercy on the prophet Isa. And he is the Mephibosheth that was born lame, that was born sickly. Who will be the firstborn whom Allah will cause to die a natural death at the last day? Let's keep going on to verse 9. And he delivered them into the hands of the Gibeonites. And they hanged them in the hill before the Lord, and they fell all seven together and were put to death in the days of harvest and the first days in the beginning of barley harvest. So the Quran, the Hadiths, all are in sync with the Old Testament scripture. We see that the Jews and the Christians will be a ransom for the Muslims. What Paul thought to do to the prophet Isa ended up backfiring on him. Now his own church has to die. You see, Saul or Paul was just like Jephthah, who had no son to sacrifice. The only thing he could sacrifice was his own daughter, which is a picture of the Christian church. The Christian church will be made a burnt offering that is hell fire for the prophet Isa for 
the Muslims. Now, we've already went through the history of Joshua being the savior of another nation, of Joseph being the savior of another nation, of Isaiah speaking of prophecies regarding another nation. Is it a coincidence or can we add it all up as logic? That Jesus is the Messiah of the Muslims and the Muslims only. Now I want to get another scripture for you. Let's go back to Joshua 6.25. And Joshua saved Rahab the harlot alive and her father's household and all that she had. And she dwelleth in Israel even unto this day because she hid the messengers. Which Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. And Joshua adjured them at that time, saying, Cursed be the man before the Lord that rises up and buildeth this city, Jericho. He shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn, and his youngest son shall he set up the gates of it. So that's going into the prophet Esau being the foundation of the Christian church, supposedly. And the younger son, which is Benjamin, which is Paul, setting up the gates. That's going into being the warden of the prison named after him, Bulas in the Arabic tongue, which means Paul. Now, the Christian church, okay, is nothing new. Ancient Christianity is seen right here in this passage. Jericho was ancient Christianity. And Joshua pronounced a curse on anyone trying to rebuild this father and son religion we call Christianity. So there you have it. Okay, I didn't want to take much of your time today, but I just wanted to prove to you from the scripture that Joseph was the Messiah of another people that Joshua saved the people of Palestine two times. He saved the people of Gibeon. He saved the people of Jericho, which all trace back to Palestine. I showed you how Isaiah, let's get that last passage, Isaiah 65 and one. I am sought of them that ask not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, behold me, behold me unto a nation. That was not called by my name. Israel is called by his name. Right here, Isaiah is prophetically speaking of another nation besides Israel. So that's why you have to ignore the rhetoric that you hear in these Israelite camps. They making it seem like God only cares about Israel and that's it. When according to the Bible, that is false. Isaiah was speaking of another nation. Jesus was speaking of the kingdom going to another nation, another race. The word is ethnos, which means non-Israelite, Gentile, heathen nation. And I haven't forgot the Hadith I told you. This is going to be Al-Bakari 2767, narrated by Abu Musa. May Allah be pleased with him. The messenger of Allah, blessings and peace be upon him, said when the day of resurrection comes, Allah will give every Muslim a Jew or a Christian. And he will say, this is your ransom from the fire. So this perfectly agrees with everything we just seen in the story of Joshua. This is the real Injil. This is the book that is bypassed by the Christians. The Christians don't have any scriptures from Joshua. You know why? Because Joshua is against their interpretation of John. They don't understand John, but they think they do. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the real truth.